Hello and welcome everyone. This is a brief video guide on how to calculate option profit and loss on Deribit and provide examples to help you understand your position outcome in various scenarios. In this lesson we'll be working through some practical examples on how to calculate the profit and loss of various option positions on Deribit. We'll be using Bitcoin in the examples to keep things as simple as possible, but the same calculations hold true for Ethereum options as well. And we will ignore fees to keep the examples as simple as possible. To adjust for fees though, you simply subtract the fees from the final profit and loss figure. The profit and loss calculations for options might at first seem a little more complicated than the ones for futures. However, just like any trade, no matter which direction you play it in, you will always have a buy order and you will always have a sell order. To calculate the P&L, we just need to calculate the difference between these two points. While the options on Deribit are all European style and therefore cannot be exercised early, you're still free to close an option position at any time by reducing your position to zero. When an option position is not held to expiry though but closed early, the profit and loss calculation is very simple. Each trade involves a buy order and a sell order, so you simply subtract what you bought the option for from what you sold it for. Let's go through a few examples. You sell a Bitcoin call option and collect a premium of 0.15 BTC. Several weeks later, the option has lost some value and currently has a best ask of 0.05 BTC. You decide to close this position by executing a buy order at the available price of 0.05 BTC. In this scenario, your profit and loss is what you sold the option for minus what you bought the option for. If your sell price was 0.15 BTC and your buy price was 0.05 BTC, it's simply 0.15 minus 0.05, equaling out to 0.1 BTC. Your position therefore made a total profit of 0.1 BTC. But what if you buy a call option instead of shorting it? Let's say you buy a Bitcoin call option and pay a premium of 0.1 BTC. A few days later, the option has gained some value and has a current best bid of 0.18 BTC. You decide to close this position by executing a sell order at the available price of 0.18 BTC. The calculation is the same as before. Your sell price was 0.18 BTC and your buy price was 0.1 BTC, so 0.18 minus 0.1 equals out to 0.08 BTC. Your position therefore made a profit of 0.08 BTC. How about a put option though? You buy a Bitcoin put option and pay a premium of 0.12 BTC. Sometime later, the option has lost some value and has a current best bid of 0.1 BTC. You decide to close this position by executing a sell order at the available price of 0.1 BTC. As before, your profit and loss is your sell price minus your buy price. Your sell price was 0.1 BTC and your buy price was 0.12 BTC. So 0.1 minus 0.12 works out to negative 0.02 BTC. Your position therefore made a loss of 0.02 BTC. Now, did you notice that we didn't need any of the details of the option or current price of Bitcoin to calculate the profit and loss for each of these first three positions? As you've closed the position early, all that matters is the price of your opening and closing orders and the difference between these two values. It is only options that are held to expiry when you have to look at the dollar values between delivery and strike price. Now, speaking of options held to expiry, at expiration, all of the extrinsic value resulting from volatility and time is gone. To calculate the value of an option when held to expiry, we just need to know the strike price and the delivery price at expiration. Any value the option has at expiry is transferred from the seller to the buyer. To calculate the total profit and loss, all that then needs to be done is to adjust for the initial premium paid. The delivery price, i.e. the price which is used to calculate an option's value when it expires, is calculated as a 30-minute TWAP or time-weighted average price of the Deribit Bitcoin index. Let's go through a few examples of options that expire. First, an ITM or in-the-money long call option. You buy the Bitcoin call option with a strike price of $10,000 and pay a price of 0.05 BTC. And you hold this option until it expires. At expiration, the price of Bitcoin is $12,500.
The value of this call option is calculated as the difference between the delivery price of 12500 and the strike price of 10000 i.e. $12,500 minus $10,000 works out to $2,500. So the option has a value of $2,500. To calculate how much this is in Bitcoin and the quantity that will be transferred, you divide this value by the current price of $12,500. So $2,500 at a Bitcoin price of $12,500 is 0.2 BTC. This 0.2 BTC is paid from the seller to you, the buyer. To calculate your final profit though, you subtract from this number the original premium you paid for the option, which was 0.05 BTC. 0.2 minus 0.05 equals out to 0.15 BTC. So your position made a profit of 0.15 BTC. Note here that when holding to expiry, you only executed one side of the trade manually a buy order in this case, and when the option expires, the delivery process closes this position off for you automatically, effectively creating the sell side of your trade. This position made a fairly nice profit, but here's an example where a loss was taken. You buy a Bitcoin call option with a strike price of $8,000 and you pay a price of 0.25 BTC. You hold this option until it expires. At expiration, the price of Bitcoin is $10,000. The value of this call option can be calculated as $10,000 minus $8,000, which works out to $2,000. To calculate how much this is in Bitcoin, you divide by the current price of $10,000 to give you 2,000 divided by 10,000 equals 0.2 BTC. This 0.2 BTC is paid from the seller to you. Your final profit can be calculated as 0.2 BTC minus 0.25 BTC or negative 0.05 BTC. So your position made a loss of 0.05 BTC. Notice how just with the previous example, this call option finished in the money and therefore had value at expiry. However, this time the eventual value of the option was not enough to make up for the price paid for the option. Therefore, position resulted in a small net loss. Let's go through some ITM put options as well. You buy a Bitcoin put option with a strike price of $10,000 and you pay a price of 0.16 BTC. You hold this option until it expires. At expiration, the Bitcoin price is $5,000. The value of this put option can be calculated as $10,000 minus $5,000, or $5,000 remaining. To calculate how much this is in Bitcoin, you divide by the current value of $5,000 to give $5,000 divided by $5,000, or 1, or 1 BTC. This 1 BTC is paid from the seller to you. Your final profit on the position can be calculated as 1 BTC minus 0.16 BTC, leaving 0.84 BTC. So your position made a profit of 0.84 BTC. And a scenario where a loss was taken while in the money. You buy a Bitcoin put option with a strike price of $9,000 and you pay a price of 0.2 BTC. You hold this option until it expires. At expiration, the price of Bitcoin is $8,000. The value of this put option can be calculated as $9,000 minus $8,000 or $1,000. To calculate how much this is in Bitcoin, you divide by the current price of $8,000 to give $1,000 divided by $8,000 or 0.125 BTC. This 0.125 BTC is paid from the seller to you. Your final profit on the position can be calculated as 0.125 BTC minus 0.2 BTC, or negative 0.075 BTC. So your position made a loss of 0.075 BTC. As with the aforementioned call options, the price moved in the correct direction for your position, and this put option did finish in the money. However, the Bitcoin price did not move far enough to make up for the price paid for the option, and so, unfortunately, a loss was taken. In all these prior examples, we only mentioned options that expired in the money. This is because when an option expires out of the money, it has no value. Therefore, there is nothing to be transferred from the seller to the buyer. In this case, the buyer will have a loss equal to the premium paid, and the seller will have a profit equal to the premium paid. Now, the previous examples are all from a buyer's point of view. The calculation for the seller's profit and loss is simply the negative of the buyer's, or the inverse. Here are some examples. Let's start with a call that expires in the money. 
you sell a Bitcoin call option, not buy in this case, with a strike price of $12,000 and collect a premium of 0.09 BTC. Then you hold the position until it expires. At expiration, the price of Bitcoin is $15,000. The value of this call option could be calculated as 15,000 minus 12,000, equaling $3,000. To calculate how much this is in Bitcoin, you divide by the current price of $15,000 to give 3,000 divided by 15,000, equaling 0.2 BTC. In this instance, as you are the seller, this 0.2 BTC is paid from your account to the buyer. To calculate your final profit and loss for this trade, you subtract this number from the premium you originally collected, which was 0.09 BTC. As a function, this would be 0.09 BTC, minus 0.2 BTC. This works out to negative 0.11 BTC, or your position made a loss of 0.11 BTC. Let's do another example where you made a profit though. You sell a Bitcoin call option with a strike price of $9,000 and you collect a premium of 0.18 BTC. You hold the position until it expires. At expiration, the price of Bitcoin is $10,000. The value of this call option can be calculated as $10,000 minus $9,000, equaling $1,000. To calculate how much this would be in Bitcoin, you divide by the current price of $10,000 to give 1,000 divided by 10,000, or 0.1 BTC. Now as you are the seller, this 0.1 BTC is paid from your account to the buyer. To calculate your final profit and loss in the trade, however, you subtract this number from the premium you originally collected, which was 0.18 BTC. So 0.18 BTC minus 0.1 BTC works out to 0.08 BTC, or your position made a profit of 0.08 BTC. And one final example with an in the money short put option. You sell a Bitcoin put option with a strike price of $12,000 and collect a premium of 0.3 BTC. You hold the position until it expires. At expiration, the price of Bitcoin is $8,000. The value of this put option can be calculated as $12,000 minus $8,000, working out to $4,000. To calculate how much this is in Bitcoin, you divide by the current price of $8,000 to give $4,000 divided by $8,000 or 0.5 BTC. This 0.5 BTC is paid from your account to the buyer. And to calculate your final profit and loss, you would subtract this number from the premium you originally collected, which was 0.3 BTC. 0.3 minus 0.5 equals negative 0.2, or your position made a loss of 0.2 BTC. Hopefully these examples provide you insight into how your position P&L would evolve in several scenarios. However, these can be broken down into general functions to easily calculate your P&L yourself. For in the money call options at expiry, the call options profit and loss in BTC is calculated as the Bitcoin price minus the strike price divided by the Bitcoin price then minus the option price. The call seller's profit and loss of course is the opposite and can be calculated as the option price minus the BTC price minus the strike price divided by the BTC price. For in the money put options at expiry, the put options profit and loss in BTC can be calculated as the strike price minus the BTC price, divided by the BTC price again, then minus the option price. The put sellers profit and loss of course is the opposite and can be calculated as the option price minus the strike price minus the Bitcoin price, divided by the Bitcoin price. You should now be able to calculate profit and loss for any option position on Deribit, for both buyer and seller. For positions with multiple legs, the total P&L is equal to the sum of the P&L of each of the options contained within it. We would also like to encourage our clients to try out positions with our new position builder. This can be found at pb.deribit.com. This is a rather powerful tool that allows you to generate notional portfolios and evaluate their P&L potential over time and price range. It also includes the ability to import your current Deribit account portfolio. A Deribit Insight article with instructions will be included in the description below. We hope these examples were useful and provide you a greater understanding regarding how our options function on Deribit. 
If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us over in our Telegram chat room at t.me forward slash Thank you very much for watching our video.